You are listening to Drop Tent Media Network. Sweet, welcome to the cast. Today we got a fucking treat of a guest. You know, he's got the special Life Begins that's on YouTube. He has the Irish Goodbye podcast on Gas Digital Network, baby. It's Mike Cannon. What's up? Hey. Boys? <laughs> How you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing good. Great, uh, man. I, I'm amped. I just got a sudden burst of energy because I, I I took an hour nap, and usually anything over 20 minutes, I'm like groggy for three hours afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, I got a second way. wind. I'm hyped. Hell yeah, dude. You usually have to that isn't there like a chart for something that uh shows you when it when sleep actually works? And it's like twenty minutes and then three hours and then eight hours. It's like yeah, it's you, like so specific. You go into like clockwork orange mode after like twenty minutes, your eyes are just like like going all over the place. <laughs> yeah. You're just now you're just existing on another realm. Yeah. Dude, that's really what it's like for me, uh like dreaming wise. Like I was telling you, I'm in groups, so I'm supposed to stop smoking weed and shit. Mm. But I was telling him, I'm like, I can't. I told him it was my back, but it's actually because my dreams are fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, I, I don't just go to sleep. I just go somewhere else. Like, one, like what, some, it's not even always something scary. It's just too real. Like, one day, I woke up from my dream, went to work for seven hours, and then when I got home from work, I woke up. I'm like, that's <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what a I'm, nightmare. I, You're pulling a double shift. <laughs> No, I called out. I'm like, I just got done, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you mean? I, I tried to be cool and pretend I knew what group meant, but what does that mean? Okay, so I guess it's basically just uh, AA, a mandatory AA type, oh, okay. type of thing. I got, so I got I got a DUI a while back, uh, mm. and after you do like Shouts two, out DUI. Hell yeah, yeah, dude, DUIs <laughs> are cool. Uh, <laughs> unless you want to do stuff, you know? <laughs> like, right? Right. Yeah. Unless you don't want to just, you know, set ten grand on fire. And yeah. Ex- be able to drive for a while. <laughs> exactly, and then be put in a group where the people that are you're paying are in charge of when you get to leave. Right. That oh. doesn't. <laughs> so, I might be here for a while, and also I don't listen. I like, like, it's yeah, it's like a bunch of people doing crack and stuff, and then I'm just like, I drank and drove one time. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Can I please leave? <laughs> one time where I got caught. Uh, well, actually, it, it was the second time. It was oh, the nice. second one, baby. <laughs> so that's why Hell I'm yeah. just like, I'm not an alcoholic. They're like, that's that's what you would say. I'm like, I know. I can't really yeah. convince <laughs> There's no winning. It's like somebody calling you defensive in an argument. It's like, I can't. I'm not fucking defensive. I I can't say anything out of this. That's literally what happened. They're like, you're definitely a raging alcoholic because you're yelling at us about how you're not. I'm like, all right, so I've had a few today. That doesn't. (laughs) Dude, I had a similar situation though, actually. I've been to, I've been going to AA since I was like four years old with my father. He was like one of the few people that either knew or just didn't care and just brought his kids so <laughs> I it was, you were gonna say one to three was wild for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah one to three dude i just couldn't fucking put the spoon and needle down i was wild um but it <laughs> but i've been here going i'm fucking choo-choo trained dude. that's right yeah just <laughs> here here comes the bump yeah. <laughs> do do matching rails uh, <laughs> but so I'm I'm familiar with the entire environment and all that shit. And then I went back when I was in college, uh, you know, just because I had started drinking. My father was such a hardcore alcoholic that he was like, listen, this is in your blood. If you don't, if you don't nip this in the butt immediately, it's going to be a problem. Um, oh, my you, God. Yeah. And so I he brought me and it, all it did was reinforce. I was like, oh, I'm not even remotely on these people's level. Like I have a long way to go. Somebody's talking about, yeah. do, you know, having six beers at breakfast and then doing bumps on the net met north on the yeah. on their way into men and it's like yeah i'm not that's not me dude it's, and it's kind of like embarrassing like they almost embarrass you about it because it, like going around the room and everyone's like yeah man i really struggle with this or like where they're like talking about fears in my last uh group we're like all mm. going around like saying what you're most afraid of and people are like i'm afraid my wife and my kid are never going to respect me again and i'm just like sharks I'm terrified of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, take this seriously. I'm like, that's literally what I'm like. I don't have these fears that everyone else has. So you're making me, you don't force me to be here and then force me to have these same problems. Like, I, right. I just, I just don't. 
But we got down to the bottom. Sharks actually does mean something way serious. Oh, no kidding. Is that like a shark is, is the metaphor for when you get 12 beers deep and who you become? <laughs> no, it was actually more. Yeah, I guess something like that. that that's, they, were, they kept trying to spin it so that it was definitely that I had a drinking problem. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I, mm. <laughs> but I yeah, think they're, they're you kind of reaching for it. They, they want you to bend the knee, though. That's what I, I'm like kind of like struggling right now just like so like i could have my breakthrough breakthrough on them and just be like oh now i finally see what i'm supposed to be doing here it's yeah, going yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will feel that way like kind of an insecurity that you don't have something to bring to the table with that like i, I had a girlfriend whose life was just way harder than mine mm -hmm. and like and then she'd be like how's your day i'm like it rules. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad. Like I can't like be sad with you right now, but yeah. no, today rocks. Yeah. To be yeah. perfectly clear, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're trying to start. Yeah. You're like trying to pick out like things that were bad that happened to you, but it's actually like a good thing. Yeah. Like, like I they, dropped, I oh, dropped go ahead. the cookie. It's like, <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to say like, I dropped the cookie, but I got like at least three bites in. Like, oh, so you got, you got to eat part of a cookie today you fucking dick dude see i actually think that's worse than not eating the cookie at all like if i'm prepared to eat a sure. full cookie and i can only eat 40 percent of the cookie i'm fucking livid at the end right like, my wife will do that where i'll eat a bacon egg and cheese down to the last three bites and i'm i'm my stomach my mind my heart is set on those three bites and i won't be satisfied unless it happens and then she'll eat it and i'm like you just ruined my day <laughs> yeah that's a rough one yeah <laughs> rod has terrible ocd so i'm sure he can relate to that pretty well oh that that would kill me and also having my heart set on leftovers and then when someone like <laughs> what, have you ever just been like hammered and you're just like looking forward to that pasta that yeah. like from the night before you're like everything is going to be okay when i get to this pasta mm -hmm. and then someone takes it it it's heartbreaking. Do you know it's even more heartbreaking when you realize you did it drunk the night before? <laughs> yeah, sure. And you have no one to blame. You're like, I could have swore I left at least four more bites of this. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why I can't get the image out of my head of your dad bringing you to uh, AA, but with one of those baby straps. And uh -huh. then, like, as, as soon as he gets out, he just puts a little bit of Coke right on your top of your head. Just does a, hey, just little, does a, a baby sweet pump. rail. Just a, a literal baby bump. <laughs> Dude, it got to the point where, like, other parents started bringing their kids. So, <laughs> like, my, my dad was a ground, uh, you know, or trailblazer. He, wow. he was the first one to do it. Other dads were like, oh, shit, this counts towards custody. So, I guess I could bring, to <laughs> I could bring my stupid kid, too, and I could do this on our days. It's great. Kill, kill two birds with one stone. That's right. A, a youth group. Mm -hmm. That rules. Oh, and, and usually they're in a church. Yeah. Oh yeah. We were always, we were always outside, like, you know, and the kids were their own stressed out group of kids, like pounding juice boxes, just being like <laughs> chain smoking, uh, candy cigarettes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Ripping, ripping baby powder cigs and just being like, which one is your dad? And they're like, Oh, he's the one that just told the story about how he beat my mom up. Cause she overcooked spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. I'll have Welch's neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care if it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> just something to take the edge off you know yeah <laughs> yeah dude I, I went to aa once and uh it, it freaked me out because uh yeah it was at a church and everyone immediately like a bunch of strangers just came up to me asking me to be my sponsor mm -hmm. and i was like that this is a lot wow yeah uh, I don't know if it's like that everywhere. I, it was probably a weird experience. What do they have to get, like a merit badge or something? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like maybe they were all just like so nice, but it freaked me out. I think it's some of them are like, yeah, it's almost like something for them to do. It's like instead right. of drinking, they could be like, oh, I'm gonna get this guy to stop. They, you, when you stop drinking, you have to fill your day with shit. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I'm <there. laughs> and I'm just like, wait, what? What did I used to do before? Before I was either drinking or recovering from drinking. Right. Yeah, and then you're like, like, yeah, you gotta like help other people do the same shit. I don't know. Isn't My dad, one of the main tenants, like service to others. That yes. Helps? Yeah, yeah, and it's part of it's actually 
it's it's an acknowledge like they're actually aware that it's also a selfish help where it's like they're they're definitely giving their efforts and trying to help people but it's also to help themselves because you're basically reiterating the program to people i'm not a big program guy but i have seen it work on a few people so it's like you know what a to each their own my father though when i lived with him this one summer I'll never forget this. He was talking, he he was a sponsor for AA since he'd been doing it for a really long time. So he's helped a bunch of people in and out. Uh, One of which actually was his buddy that used to come over and fucking fix our computer when I was a kid. Then he drove me to basketball camp for seven hours. And then like a few weeks later, he murdered his wife and himself. What? Yeah. So Uh these are the kind of people that were just coming in and out of my home as a child. (laughs) And then, and then when I was an adult, my dad, I I was living with him like in between uh, college years and my father was talking to one of his sponsees or whatever in the backyard. And we lived right on the Hudson river and we were renting this one place. And my dad's on the phone. He's like talking this guy off the ledge. This guy's really having a tough time. And uh, my dad goes to sit down on a picnic table and the table shatters and his phone flies out of his hand and into the fucking river. Oh, no. So so he lost the conversation (laughs) while convincing this guy not to kill himself. This is pre-iPhone. So he didn't have his number anywhere. He didn't have anything saved. He he drove to the mall as fast as humanly possible. I was with him. He got a brand new phone. He's like, you guys got to turn this on. I need to call his his life or death, whatever. He opens the phone as soon as they activated it after like, you know, two hours or whatever it took and didn't realize that it wouldn't have any of his numbers in there. (laughs) Oh, my God. Damn. So he couldn't call the guy. I had no idea what happened to him. And I guess, you know, the guy ended up being fine. But okay. he found out like three days later when he finally got in touch with him. And the guy was like, what the fuck was that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I poured my and heart he, out to you. Yeah, that, I don't know what to tell you. Just... Your, that dude probably thought your dad was just like, boring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Listen, kill yourself dude. or don't, but just stop wasting my minutes. Yeah, I've fucking had it. Yeah, it's daytime right now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, we we talked about it a little bit on the the last episode, but I had a situation recently. I'm in Philly, mm. and uh, I was taking an Uber into Jersey, and we're two minutes from the Ben Franklin Bridge, and my Uber driver's like, "Hey man, can I ask you something?" I was like, "Hit me," and he said, "What would you say to someone to stop them from killing themselves?" Two minutes from the bridge. <laughs> That's wow! <laughs> yeah, you just, uh, you just sounded the alarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know that there might be a fire in my house, but keep going. I'll should definitely to... check on that. <laughs> Yo, That's is hilarious. this story fire? <laughs> so, yeah, this this pot is flames. Keep going. I'm gonna see if my house is on fire real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, basically, like what what I wanted to say was like, like yeah, two things. Like I'll tell someone is like. You know, it always gets better. And then second of all, with suicide, I always thought of it as more of a solo thing. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so, so please don't take us both, yeah. please. Holy shit. So what did he, what did you say? You said that to him? No. I, um, oh, because that would be I, hilarious. You're like, listen, I don't want to be a part of this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I was kind of hostage because I mm-hmm. was in the car. Right. And, um... And, and then uh, I, I kind of just like filibustered till we um, got over the bridge. <laughs> like I, I was asking him more about it. I was like, "Is this your friend?" <laughs> and like, just right. to learn over. And then we got over the bridge. And then like, and then like I could take like a breath. And then like it seemed like he was talking about a friend, but maybe about himself. It it was very strange. I, I gave him five stars yeah. though, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I hope you gave him a tip and five stars, and just said, you know, uh, just wait. That would have been wild if that was an actual mo- – like, that was where he wanted to go. Like, that was what he was doing it for. He was like, I bet you if I just tell him I'm going to kill myself, it's automatic five stars, good rating. Yeah, wow. It's like really going the extra mile to make sure you get that five star because no one's going to give him a one star. Like, good good luck getting home across that bridge. <laughs> that guy went to the Jordan Belfort School of Uber drivers. <laughs> He's just always <laughs> closing. <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you? <laughs> I wanted to pen. end it all. <laughs> well, I'll kill myself if you don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I always was surprised that no one has really done the stand up too often. Like, go on stage and be like, 
I'm like, fucking funny. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like that. This. I have threatened to kill myself. I mean, more times than I'd like to acknowledge on stage, both <laughs> in both in jest and in complete sincerity. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, sincerity. Then, did you guys hear about that kid? I don't know. Wh- I think he was in Oregon, but it, or, it was some open mic and some kid. He was the last person on the open mic. And he was a guitar comic, which yeah. I guess that's reason enough to kill yourself. But he sang some song, Sorry About the Mess. And then he fucking stabbed himself to death at the end of the song. Wow, stage. that's a, such a good closer. <laughs> yeah, I, you can't follow it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to follow that? Just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you're just stepping uh, but, through DNA, a crime scene. I, I did yeah. hear that. I didn't know it was – I heard it was just a guitar, so I didn't know it was also comedy involved. But now uh-huh. that – yeah, I, 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 I I pictured they would do that a lot in music, but now that a comedian, uh, but and if you're still playing the guitar and the comic, that's, I mean, like I mean, you dude, said, that's pretty. Being a being a music comic is bad enough, but also being a prop comic, that's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pull, <laughs> you pull you out a knife that. too, you fucking hack. Someone's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, no, that's what he's already a prop comic. So someone's like, see, like material's not on the outside; it's what's on the inside that <laughs> that really matters. Like. Props yeah, they, on the they, inside. <laughs> Take on these props. Just pull a pull an Artie Lang publicly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that just goes to show, like, how insane open mics are. Like, the, there's people that I know that if they did that, I wouldn't be insanely surprised. Oh, I yeah. Guess. I mean, most of the people that I started with, you know, it, that's, that's what always makes me laugh, of, you know, about – when people are like, and these open micers, they're doing horrible rape jokes and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, these are like literally the dregs of humanity. Like <laughs> you ever, you ever go to the, you ever see Batman begins and you go to the narrows, <laughs> like that's what open mics are. It's people straight out of Arkham that have nowhere else to fucking go. If you want to try to police their speech, by all means, have a conversation with them, but I won't. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's a waste of time. Yeah. I've talked to a church. Tr- I've talked to a tree before and I've gotten more information or like a, a mutual <laughs> understanding between that and I have actual people like that. Oh, me too on mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> oh. Trees are very understanding. That's right. Yeah. But it's yeah. funny. It's like the whole point of being in open mics is to get out of them. It's like, no, yeah. you know, if you want to make them more uh, hospitable. Got out. And, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like people, people talk about how to improve open mics and it's like, you kind of shouldn't. I think everybody right. should want to get out of them. The only people that stay in them for life are fellow insane people. So if they have a safe space to, you know, cohabit- cohabitate with other psychos, by all means. Right. And that's also something you got to keep in mind is that, like, we're, we're saying, like, I'm surprised more people don't fucking just blow their brains out on stage, these people. It's because they don't do it because they're thinking about it, about other people. They're like, they're just like, they think they're they're doing all right. They're like, this is God's work. Oh, there's plenty of people. There are plenty of people throughout the course of my career that looked at me and are like, Cannon should kill himself. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, and as I'm looking back at them thinking the same. So I have, I have no judgment. No, no other profession has to go through that, which is wild. Like, like to be an accountant, it's like, all right, for the first like year or so, you got to do accounting with other sad accountants. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, with other accountants do. that are doing drugs and throwing shit at each other. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think porn is kind of does that. Like the first when you start out in porn, you're just in a dark room with a bunch of dicks sticking out of the walls. <laughs> like you gotta suck them all. Oh, that's an you, old. That's old. And then, yeah, and then you get then you get then you get to go to the the bus. You get like a gig on the bus. You get banged out on a fucking <laughs> shitty bus with two dudes that you don't know. And then next thing you, you know, you're on the casting. Yeah, and you're yeah. That's when you make it big. But that's why porn uh, uh, porn actors and actresses are like comedians. They're figuring out you can do it yourself. <laughs> you don't <laughs> you don't have yeah. to rely on the industry anymore. The industry puts you through bullshit. Right. You know, there's like comedy goals that like is like a huge deal to comics, but like other people might not get how big of a deal it is. Mm-hmm. I I wonder if it's the same thing for porn stars. Like like mom, you don't understand. This is a huge deal. Actually, I've moved on to BBC. And this is, <laughs> this is like, a, this is huge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think there has to be, right? I mean, you know, there's probably, I, do you have to start in gay porn? Is that like a rumor that we were taught as kids? So we would stay out of it. <laughs> Ma- males, males for sure. They I do, right? I think you all, yeah, you starting with a penis in your butt for sure. 
Yeah. Nope. Oh, you got a bottom too. <laughs> yeah, you got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> show you ours. You got to earn your stripes. <laughs> literal stripes of shit smeared the, across your back <laughs> i think instead of like comedy goals like how comedians have like what rob was saying with the goals be like oh i just did like i don't know this gig or whatever it's the it's instead of the porn star th- having goals it's actually just negative goals for the father you're just like the father's like oh shit she made it to black like that's like <laughs> she that's not good i don't like this there's three massive penises changing the dyna- diameter of my daughter's inners so the more upset your father gets the more you're succeeding in porn yeah Boom. It, well it's like someone like taking a shit on your painting you know <laughs> <laughs> you're like i've spent years just working on this and then you just spit on it <laughs> even worse fucked it you fucked my painting <laughs> <laughs> well that's like yeah. what, how much how much steven spielberg feel right now like that you know and not listen earn money how you're going to earn money it doesn't it it really does not matter to me porn i I don't look down at porn people as much as i don't look down at comics but for a physical representation of how you performed as a father while being a high profile director you know that seems like that's kind of a personal indictment or at least based on the old way of thinking right if you're if your adopted daughter is in porn i don't know doesn't that seem like you were probably pretty absent and not supportive yeah. for her to whatever yeah yeah for sure like you definitely aren't doing a good like you i feel like you're still sharing responsibility for that you get the, at least the assist, the assist. <laughs> you're, you're like her bio parents were around for long enough <laughs> they spent genetics <laughs> in her well i, yeah. I guess like it, it, it's kind of the difference between like if you bake a cake and it doesn't like taste good like it sucks a little more because i'm like i baked the cake but if like yeah. someone bakes a cake and gives it to me and i eat it and i'm like well like i didn't make it you know what i mean <laughs> but what if you nurtured the cake <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so what if somebody gave you the ingredients and everything was set up and then all you had to do was put it in the oven and dress it and then it sucked well at yeah. least you have, i guess you have the the out of being like faulty ingredients <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> These <were> mine. fair enough <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man. I was actually thinking uh, the the other day if I would be down to adopt. I think I would be. Yeah. But, yeah. How many? I would only do it if there was like a shit ton of them. Like yeah. at least ten. Like ten. Like Joe Leet. I don't know who that is, but yeah, exactly like her. Yeah, yeah. Her, she um him. she she went and got a bunch of I think um Asian babies. Angelina yeah. Jolie. Yeah. Yeah, she got oh, really? I think she picked and choose from a couple different countries, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, continental. Yeah. <laughs> continental she, yeah, I think her first kid was like South Korean, and then uh, she has an African baby as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she has some, some ones with Brad Pitt also. Yeah, I remember hearing about Brad. Yeah, the, yeah that's a weird thing. <laughs> yeah. Because like, are they even still together? No. No, as a matter of fact, there was some tumultuous uh, shit going on about custody with them towards the end. Apparently, Brad uh, was was boozing quite a bit, just to circle back to that. And uh, he may have hit the oldest one on, like, a private jet home. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah, I do remember. There's some – someone had a joke about that. He said, like, I don't want to ruin this. I'm sure he doesn't do comedy anymore, but he said that, like – he used the wrong spoon for the caviar and uh, Brad Pitt hit him. So yeah, that makes sense now. <laughs> but I had no idea he was drinking. That that that's that seems yeah, say that's cool. You get a bunch of kids that you don't really love. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I picture just like the, the kid though, just instinctually knowing karate. Like you know Neo in the Matrix where he's like, I know karate. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the kid just catches the fist, he's like Yeah, but have you seen have you seen fucking Troy, dude? Brad Pitt would not have any of that. Yeah, Brad. Brad's been trained in several like, several combat sports. Yeah, he'd just be like Hector. Just fucking <laughs> that, and sn- that and snatch, and also Fight Club. He's been he's been kind of bare knuckle boxing in a lot of movies. Yeah, you got no yeah. chance versus Mr. Smith. Right, <laughs> it's game over. But oh, man. yeah, damn uh, that. Um, I mean that that was that that relationship was probably doomed. I don't know how anyone that hot keeps it going for <laughs> years i yeah I an article on this that like uh like hot celebrities genuinely have a way harder time 
of like keeping relationships. Oh, really? Which well, because makes it, total sense. What is it? The insecurity of their partner. <clears throat> that that, and then also too, just um, the the access to everything. Yeah. yeah, I mean, doesn't Beyonce have a song where "Let Me Upgrade"? It's constant. <laughs> no, that's up- hilarious, though. <laughs> Who is and, it? and then and then like Jay Z cheated on her, <laughs> and then she was like, "Well, you know, not this time." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why the successful ones they always have some sort of agreement, you know, or or you know, it, it, like Will and Jada, they've been doing their own thing, and then it weirdly got public when the one kid, you know, broke his NDA. <laughs> right. Right. But yes. but for, I I think like LeBron and his wife probably have an agreement. I mean, he's been with her since he was in high school. How could he not? He's the most famous guy on earth. There's never an incident yeah. or anything like that. Like they just have to Peyton Manning apparently had like chicks in different cities throughout the, throughout the country. And it was just known between him and his wife that that's what was going on. It's like, wow. he, and he, I mean, he is as fucking moon roof looking ugly as, as anybody is. <laughs> so, I mean, Truly. All yeah. awful sloping forehead. Just keeps going back. Mm-hmm. But the, he, didn't, he, he, uh, didn't you meet your wife in high school or something? I met her in fifth grade. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, dude. I met I met her on the blacktop where they uh, left us, uh, lined us up to catch our bus. Damn! Wow, dude. Yeah, That's pretty crazy. wild. What and kind then, of game? What kind of game were you spitting? Uh, like, I was no, good I at hap- sports. That was my game. Kickball, <laughs> dude. Yeah, you get the, fucking kick the shit out of the ball. That's yeah, I mean that's that's all the game you could possibly have, you know, when your penis is bare. It's like just look <laughs> at look at what I'm capable of doing. I'm good at these yeah. sports. That watch me run from here to over there. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I probably even asked her to watch. <laughs> Rob, Rob still does that from time to time. He's like, time. It. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then so, she moved in next door, which was pretty great. Like we initially met, oh, she, in like is she two, like. Ev- Every single romantic stereotype. She's the girl next to her, the girl in mm-hmm. fifth grade. Yeah, uh, yeah. High school, high school sweetheart. Is the girl in fifth grade a classic one? <laughs> yeah, the classic fifth grade girl. <laughs> Listen, story. I only had one example, and if I didn't use it, it was complete dog shit, all right? You know just- what? I, to, to save you a little bit, I do think Winnie Cooper and Kevin were in fifth grade when they met. All right. Yeah. Or somewhere near that. Let's just pretend. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I got your back. Ty goes to the riffer. <laughs> At ease. <laughs> but yes, you moved next door. Yeah, so she moved next door. So we became like, you know, really good friends. And she's really good at sports and basketball. So we played basketball together. Uh, it was like the three of us, me, my now wife, and my buddy Timmy, who also lived, you know, a couple houses down. And we were, you know, thick, thick buds. We'd just play ball every single day and beat each other up, play movies, all you know, or watch movies. And then, uh, you know, we dated in giant quotes in like fifth sixth seventh eighth grade and then we actually dated in high school where you know you start fingering and stuff like that so then we took a big extensive break which we both slept with uh other people which i think is wildly important because i wouldn't i wouldn't wish my dick (laughs) as the only dick on anybody ever so you know it's nice that she got to get out there and experience the world coming to terms with that is a really healthy thing as a male like just being like I other penises I get like come on this well, is not especially if your dick is kind of like not you've seen them all in porn you know which ones are rocking and which ones not that's right yeah and I mean you know you, we, we've all been out there we know there's various shapes of vaginas and certain lengths of lips so <laughs> if if you only have one and you're just like well that's what a vagina is you get out there and then you're like holy shit this is uh, this is a smorgasbord of uh, board of clam yeah. And actually, I think if anything, that's more of a testament to you. Because after seeing the world, still came back. Oh, yeah. that's right, my friend. The guy she dated right before we got back together too was a uh, was a black man. So oh, I definitely <laughs> <laughs> let's isolate that and make sure they know it wasn't me making the noise. But uh... <laughs> I preferred it. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's like let's let's try one of these now, so it's not in the middle. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> send this to Lauren Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that made me feel pretty good about myself. Yeah, that that's a that's a big win in my book. <laughs> uh, big, big win. <laughs> that's a that's a big win, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I. I are I, I are either of like you guys involved? Questions. What? 
are either of you guys involved? Like, how are you living during these times? Have you been with a chick or what, what are you guys doing? I snagged a chick. We both kind of snagged a chick right at this pandemic. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, um, dude. Would you like, come here? Come here. <laughs> the lockdown lady. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I got, uh, she's been, we've been quarantined together. I got bunk beds. I make her sleep on the top bunk. <laughs> Do you really have bunk beds with a with your girl? Well, I mean, I'm li- I'm living at home because uh, of the whole DUI, so it's hard to like you know get yeah. around. So I've been, and also I, I'm blaming on that, but I was already living at home before. But, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, but you I'm still living at home. So. You would have made a lot of progress had this never happened. Trust me. Yeah, I I, I believe I believe so. Just when it was looking great. Yeah, <laughs> the, the DUI. Had. I mean, sometimes you know why you're drinking. It's like, all right, I need an excuse, you know? Mm. I, need, I need something to blame this on. But, yeah, so her, her family's like crazy with COVID. So she's been staying here. And, um, yeah, well, it's a twin bunk bed. So, like, I'm just – and I would prefer the bottom. And, it's, you know, it's my – how, <laughs> how, uh, how does she feel about having sex in a bunk bed with a Stone Cold Steve Austin poster on the wall? I thought you'd recognize that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, way too cool with it. And, I mean, I'm, yeah. there should be a conversation, more conversations about it. Like, can we at least take the posters down? I'm just like putting more of them up. <laughs> Using the tack the, the, on the back of yeah. it. Yeah, I just put up stars on my ceiling. You know, so low in the dark stars. <laughs> I think she might be a pedophile. I think that's what I'm realizing. That yeah. She's just like into like 15 year olds. Wow, but good, for, but good for her. You're the best of both worlds. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm not the age. That's the, I'm not the age, and I'm the emotionally there. That's right. I used to have a terrible joke that never worked, but it was that Ariana Grande should be used to wean pedophiles off of children. <laughs> <laughs> just because she looks like she's 11, and then right after they're done, she could show her, show her ID, and it just shatters their entire world. Dude, that's actually hilarious because she, my girlfriend, literally um, on Saturday uh, had to dress up for a children's birthday party. Nice. And she went, she went as like uh, the Ariana Grande, like from Sam and Cat with the hair and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, was, I was just like, is she? Le- I don't know if that's legal to be like. Because I was like, I'm like, I love that show. She's like, you do? I'm like, I'm allowed to like that yeah. show, right? Or no? Because <laughs> I'm picturing myself being 12. <laughs> but yeah it's like it's like pedophile methadone dude yeah it gets she, that's true well yeah man uh, she's she's 21 so i was like and i'm 29 so it, it, i'm a big fan of crystal leah uh <laughs> to, so, like the foul in the footsteps of the greats yeah uh, yeah we're big fans around here <laughs> <laughs> per, uh, professional and personal that's right yeah oh, another joke that i didn't get to work but it's also true is that every once in a while i'll find myself fantasizing about like our high school sex experiences and then i realize i'm jerking off to a 15 year old's pussy <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, that's pretty terrible <laughs> i don't wonder why that didn't work that's that's yeah i think you it's my out. memory yeah <laughs> yeah people are like fuck <laughs> Like what do I have to because they, they probably have it in their own brain. They're like, I do, I did a really good job hiding that from myself. Yeah, it's their I mean, own sickness. That's right. Yeah, everyone knows a good comedian blames the audience. Right. That, that's kind of beautiful. Though. Like, if you're still jerking off to like those experiences, like it's it's timeless. It's like thriller. That's like you yeah. can, <laughs> you can, that you is what I call her vagina. Like, yeah. You, you don't Thank want, God you got. You don't want it to be like like a Kesha moment, just a flash in the pan. Yeah. That you want as many times as you can get to thriller as you can That's in right. any aspect of life. Dude, you're you're, <laughs> you're lucky the, you guys weren't doing hand stuff in fifth grade. Could you imagine if you had that at your disposal? That could have been oh, dangerous. That could have been be da- tough. That could have been the gateway jerk. There, <laughs> Do a hand s- turkey on your dick. <laughs> 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 yeah. She'd probably get like Cheerios on the base of my dick too. <laughs> Just googly eyes at the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> macaroni necklace around the base. <laughs> it's my cock ring. My yeah. girl. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, kids are starting to fuck earlier and earlier. My my friend oh. uh, is a elementary school teacher. Like he'll he'll hear of like kids like fucking in fifth grade, which is crazy. Yikes. Yeah, that uh that's sad. <laughs> that's really sad, you know. Yeah. The, they're not the, they're not fucking in the bathrooms, are they? He's just getting wind of some sick gossip or is he actually like 
He's plugged the in. He plugs into the. Wild fucking with a bathroom pass. Oh yeah. Like you had to sign out. I mean, I did that in middle school. I, I where I didn't fuck, but I I was getting like blown in seventh grade, which was definitely too young. But we would, yeah, her and I would go to the bathroom, and then we'd go in this like one hallway near the art classes at the you know at the far end of the middle school and just handle business. That's, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it never came. I just like was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this later. Oh, yeah, right. I can't wait to can't wait to do a pod and fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> during a pandemic on Zoom. This is really gonna. This memory is gonna be. Fun. Yeah, because I wasn't even I wasn't even telling my friends at the time. Like it was such shameful, weird behavior. It, it was just like just so I could do it. I guess I don't know what my deal. That's was. weird because I would have been bragging so much. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, I would have been texting people, be like, yeah, walk by the library right now yeah watch me catch dome with my fucking two and a half inch dick <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yeah that's probably why you didn't want people to know that's, that's remember, exactly why one of my friends yeah he used to be like yeah no girls touching my penis until i'm at least in ninth grade like why he's like it's not ready it's like i, I don't want it to like it's kind of like a comedian like sometimes like when you're not like good yet you don't want to like put too many videos up yeah people like that's like, they'll remember you for that yep it's undercooked. Yeah, exactly. You gotta, you gotta let that peen burst a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, it's too that, pink if, on the if inside. Anything, if anything, that's very optimistic of him. Right, yeah. Like, it's you like, know like, what? like It'll get there. It yeah. Will. You better <laughs> fucking hope so. Otherwise, you're just wasting valuable time. Yeah, I, I, wonder, I wonder, like, what the day was where, like, most dudes lost hope for their dick. I could tell you it was Like, 19. this is final form dick. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's always still hope, right? <laughs> no no there's not <laughs> now it's now there's just less blood <laughs> yeah. oh man i uh yeah I, I remember just in middle school all my friends were just very liberal with their dicks like my, my friend's uh dad let him have one of his like porn vhs tapes and we just all jerked off in that room together yeah yeah we we all like found a corner and we just how old are you yeah how old are you rob um 27 oh okay see that's interesting man even like because i i've been trying to talk about this on stage recently and guys that are maybe it's like 25 and under but all do like i'll ask dudes that are like young be like the first time you watch porn was it alone and they're like what like yeah what are you fucking out of your mind i'm like oh, that's a generational thing because i the first time i watched porn i was with 11 of my best friends because we had one tape one tv and a limited amount of time you know somebody's mother yeah. wasn't home so we all just fucking you know put a puddle in our palm together in some kid's <laughs> living room a puddle in our palm Oh man, you imagine how much it must suck for the parent to come home to that. (laughs) Oh yeah, just 11 10 year olds jerking their dicks feverishly in the living room. Or, or you know how badly they are. Crustables. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they call the cart, the other carpet from now on, just crustables. (laughs) Crustables. Kids, I got some Dunkaroo. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. Oh, gross. I think Dunkaroo's the vanilla was made with jizz, rainbow jizz. Yeah, jizz and horse hooves just to get the yeah. consistency down. <laughs> That's Manual right. Slumber party jizz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah every yeah. slumber party was just a Dunkaroo factory. <laughs> Dunkaroo we never, dicks. we never openly jerked off, but there was a lot of watching porn and just like suppressing sexual energy around oh, yeah. each other. It was like, I'm not hard. Be like, we'd be like, what are you fucking hard? You're gay. We're around a bunch of guys. It's like, no, there's a girl getting fucked. I like it. They're like, no, it's because you're gay, dude. Dude, we used to to do, uh, or I, I should say, used to do AOL instant messenger sex with chicks in my grade. So, and I was, I was, for whatever reason, really good at getting girls in my grade to like say some real outlandish wild shit, especially over AIM. And me and my buddies would just be sitting there with like, you know, lightheaded with purple dicks, just (laughs) just, just waiting for us to be able to disperse and jerk off by ourselves. Be like, yeah, that's when everyone like rushes home and everyone knows like what they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that, like when you're like really hungover, there's something about like getting home and jerking off because you failed from the night before. And <laughs> like we used to always be like, oh, I guess I gotta leave now. And like no one stays after a drunk and they, they have a rush home. Now we're just like, all right, I'm gonna leave. I gotta go beat off. I'll be 
what are you doing for lunch or you want to get lunch? I, I, but I got to go beat off at home. I need some like leveling yeah. down, you know? Yeah. Uh, I did. I did like what you were saying with uh, sharing that shit with your friends. You're just like, oh my God, dude, when I was in eighth grade, I got a video of a 10th grader fingering herself. She sent it to me. And then I wrote an 80s hair metal ballad to it yeah <laughs> and synced it up and invited my friends over i was like yo this is pretty hot also pretty proud of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah also oh, i hope you deleted that video because that could be trouble for you now <laughs> oh yeah it, it's long gone on a fucking windows whatever just Oh yeah, dude. Some some fucking one of my Dells that's in a dump right now is gonna end up getting somebody fucking arrested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more people should just be going around the dump looking for thrown out laptops that people thought they were safe. Right. That's the, <laughs> that's got that's got to be the next step for like woke people. Like, all right, there's got to be some fucking filth on these dumpster computers. Yeah, yeah, dude. We, Geek Squad probably have, has seen the most horrendous shit. Who? Geek Squad. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I wonder how many, like, actual pedophiles get reported because of that. Like, just some fucking dummy, you know, happening upon some, you know. Yeah. Good play. Some geek. Yeah. Someone's like, you don't, don't, don't go into this folder. You won't like what you find in this folder. Yeah. You've yeah, done. The folder you've done called too. fishing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, I remember finding my dad's tape. And it, it said fish of kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was me. Yeah. You should have done a better job spacing those two out. <laughs> yeah, now now that you mention it, my uh, my dad was a pedophile. So that's, oh. that's, yes. uh, yeah. that's cool, that's though. Right. That's, yeah. pretty, that's cool. That's diverse. Yeah, you could write your own is... Nanette with that story. <laughs> yeah. Dude, also, I, I thought it could. Is it is it his sex tape? Like him, you watch your dad bang. No, I wish. I would love to see my dad's sex tape, but really? it's not with my mom. Okay. Okay. Just to, to see my dad out in the wild just crushing it. There, there's like so just many Just feasting like a you wild. Think, you think your dad's good at sex? Um, I <laughs> like to believe, but who knows? Yeah. You who like to believe. Man, you like your dad. Good for you. Yeah, cool dude. Rob, cool dude. Rob wants to go and like grab his hips and then like, come on, daddy, get him. <laughs> my my dad is like shit fluid rhythm though. Like he, I watch how he golfs and he's all hitch and he's all, you know, <laughs> he, his hips don't seem too flexible. I bet he, I bet he fucks like a square dance. It looks like he sucks. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. yeah man. I mean, I, I, you know. I don't talk to him, so that would be a hilarious first question. I'm like, listen, I know we haven't, I know you haven't met my son, but how do you have sex? <laughs> <laughs> I wear it's real, yeah. Just like hit him up, like just let you know, just send him a clip of this part. Be like, yeah, <laughs> th thinking about you, thinking about you, XOXO. <laughs> Wish you were here. Yeah, just send yeah. him like a, like an old family photo, just throwback Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> How's the hips? <laughs> Hips don't lie. Shakira told us all that about oh, that. So hot. Well, yeah, I, I do. I do like to think about my dad in situations that I've been like in my early twenties, where I don't know. Like he, he's just like with a bunch of his boys. He tries to like say a joke, and then it's just silent, and people are like, "Shut the fuck up, Don," <laughs> and then they just like move on. And then my dad feels insecure. <laughs> like I just want to like. Just weird <laughs> moments like that, I want to see. Does That's he... why. Go ahead. No, I, I, I was going to say nothing again. <laughs> I was like, does your dad fill you in on like his youth? Like, has he told you stories like that? Um, he he told me when he was like really young, he got bullied, and uh -huh. like certain things, and and then from the rest, it's mostly like sex stories. But I'm mm -hmm. more interested in just like the little shitty things. Yeah, I'm always interested in that. If like somebody, you know, if if dads do that, like communicate their small shitty stories, where you know, which would be you know benign and ridiculous to anybody else listening, but obviously your son is super interested and entertained by anything, you know. Right. Like, I, I'm probably gonna tell my kid way too much shit. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, that's kind of the. You're kind of a. You would be a bad father if you didn't, because there, there's all places where you can learn from it and grow. Yeah. 
Like yeah. if you don't, if you always tell like your like cool stories. Like yeah, I'm the fucking man. I know. And they don't like like that. There, it's important too to be like so that your kid listens to you. You gotta be cool, otherwise kids like they don't fucking listen to you. Yeah. But you have to tell this. <laughs> you have to tell the stories of how you got there. Otherwise, right. Dude, I don't know how my father felt at any point in his life. <laughs> like, he just, he's never expressed, like, at a moment of uncertainty or fear or, like, any career stuff. Like, he just never, that was never part of our conversation, and it's exactly everything I would like to hear about. Well, was he just, uh, like, a no questions dude? He's it's just like, Irish Catholic, to, you know? It's like he came from a family of eight, and uh, uh, they were, hi- like, hardcore Irish Catholics. So his parents never talked to him. They were wildly abusive, he, you know? And so I think he started out with good intentions, but if you don't fucking work on yourself or do whatever, like, you're just going to fall into the trappings of your genetics, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that's definitely, like... What? I was, gonna, I was saying, do you go to therapy? I use I I was for a little while and now uh, I'm I'm like re looking for another therapist but literally every therapist is book cold so instead I started a solo podcast on my Patreon <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just like fuck that I might as well just just talk at people and and get it off my chest hey dude if you want to join my group uh, I think they're uh, <laughs> they're 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 taking uh, visitors oh nice well I'm no booze two years this Thursday actually. For real? Uh, yeah, dude. But I'm all I, I smoke weed and shit, but uh I'm not uh yeah, drinking I just no longer worked for me. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm getting get after I'm four getting and then when do you pick it up again after four? <laughs> after what? So yeah, you you were you got sober at four and then how yes. long did that last? <laughs> that <laughs> that lasted back. until I was twenty one. Or no, I saw <laughs> I think I started I started drinking actually when I was like twenty twenty one. Oh so really? Yeah, because I played basketball for my first two years of college, and I was, like, really disciplined and just super into that lifestyle. And so I didn't, I didn't booze at all. It just wasn't a part of my life. And then as soon as I stopped playing basketball and I got hurt, I kind of was like, all right, let's try this out. And I hit the fucking ground running and was, like, doing blow within eight months. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. You, you set off all the fireworks at once. Yeah, it was really fun, though. But, I mean, that, that also, like, it, it just made me realize that, that's not the like demonizing alcohol uh, because you have a problem isn't the way to expose your children to it because right. I just I literally was like it's it's bad it's bad it's bad I love this rocket you know all that shit and if if yeah. I had a healthy relationship with it or if I at least tried it during high school a few times you know maybe I would I could have been a more uh, knowledgeable consumer yeah yeah well, I, I envy those people that could just have like a glass. Yeah. Like, it looks nice. Sociopaths. But I, 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 <laughs> I can't do that, yeah. I don't understand it, I, you know, because I don't like the taste of alcohol. The one thing I miss right. is, is wine. Like, I genuinely like the feeling and the taste of wine. That's always fun. But, the, like, when it comes to beer or whiskey or whatever, like, I, I've gotten to a place where I tolerate and quote-unquote un- enjoy it, but I would never wish for anything else to taste like that. Yeah, you're totally right. I, I started like, I started drinking bourbon because like I get all the fancy glasses and all yeah. the, the fancy ice cubes and all the the gentleman stuff about it. And then I'm drinking, I'm like, oh yes, this is great. And then like, I'll have like a cigar with it. Like, oh wow, it pairs real well. <laughs> and then like someone will have like apple juice and I'll take a sip of like, oh, it's so fucking much better than what I'm drinking right now. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish this something's an acquired taste, it's just bad. Nothing can be an acquired taste. Yeah, it's made you that you developed a fucking habit towards it. You're like, it's yeah. acquired taste. It's like, yes, I need it. To, to but it be becomes more. very cool for people to try to uh, convince you that it's the best, like that it tastes good. And it's like, listen, I understand. Like, it's you've attached it to a good feeling, and you probably enjoy some of the like some of the taste. Like, some of it's tolerable. Like I said, but nothing right. like it tastes like a campfire like it, that's exactly not, yeah. you know like, you, it's not they started they, they especially when you, you can tell it's going to be shit by the way that they're like there's going to be hints of oak wood i'm like i don't want to drink a tree this, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, <laughs> this is terrible yeah oh you mistook me for somebody that likes to eat rafts <laughs> <laughs> yeah just take a fucking apple juice dude. <laughs> yeah but I, I i guess i guess it kind of has to taste bad because if it tasted unbelievable, people would die all over the place. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a twisted T guy or I was a twisted T guy. So that, that shit was fucking dangerous. It was the best hangover uh, booze on earth. Dude, that would, that would probably develop a pretty bad one. Mm-hmm. The sh- sugar, there's so much sugar in it. Oh yeah, dude. My face would look like a hardcore quagmire after like a, a weekend <laughs> binge. Like I'd just have the, I'd have like a 15 inch wide face. Yeah, it is weird that alcohol like reshapes your your head. I don't mm-hmm. understand. Is it just from liquid in your brain? I don't get and, and the sugar and the carbs and just everything. It's just not. It's then, you know, yeah. By, it by breaks when? apart your muscles. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not, it's so much fun. That it's, like, it's the it's best. Not. I love it. <laughs> I, I, I love it too. And I'll have just times where I'm just so hungover. I, I said something like so embarrassing. Like I got emotional with a friend and I'm just like replaying that the next day. And I'm like, this fucking sucks. I hate yeah. this. I'm never doing it again. And then the moment I just feel hundred percent again, I'm like, let's go. I literally have a, I have a full chunk about that on my, on my special because it was like the anxiety was becoming far too much. Like that's the reason I'm not drinking right now. And yeah. it's not, I didn't, I've definitely had several rock bottoms that I just ignored, but I, uh, I didn't have like, oh, no, no, no. yeah, I didn't have a proper rock bottom, but <laughs> it got to the point where the post anxiety was so much. And I'm an anxious guy anyway. I have anxiety problems, but like that would level it up and then it would also add a dash of depression and self-hatred so that would all wrap itself up and fucking you know and and just become this huge three-day affair where i was like this isn't worth it at all yeah i'm actually go- that's basically what i'm going through right now where the point is like i'm like all right well i'm not gonna not drink for this birthday party or like on thanksgiving but at the same time i like three days later i'm still like how am i still mentally hung over yeah. like like if, like you're saying the depression and the anxiety is like just spikes through the roof and there's nothing you can do besides just go oh jesus oh no yeah. and then and then i start thinking like wait rob like just like you start thinking like i said wh- why would i say that yeah like fr- like from st- something like a, from like three months ago too it's like why am i even thinking this and then there's like some weird song stuck in my head and i'm like i fucking hate this song and you, <laughs> yeah and I'm, and, and you're just and like I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole um like you're speaking the truth when you're drunk no. Like, oh, that's how he really feels. I'm like, dude, I don't think fucking Obama like did 9/11 or whatever. Like, <laughs> no, you're like speaking long from term. Your it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like your id. It's your fucking. It's your primate brain. So it's not really based on truth more than it's based on animal bullshit. You know what right. I mean? So it's completely booze. Like targets your anger, your your sexual shit, your aggression, like you know anything like that. So. It might be truth, but with all that's filtered through it. Yeah, it's truth as if you were, yeah, like a, an infant that n- hasn't learned anything yet. It's right. basically just took away all the knowledge that you've gained and be like, here's my initial thought. Okay, let me go through the process of like sh- trimming the edges so this actually isn't just something horrible or yeah. it actually makes sense and stuff. Yeah, but my one friend said like, oh, like you said this, you must have really meant it. I was like, I was poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> poisoned, poisoned i tell you why would you believe anyone who's poisoned that's right that's a good that's point a, that's a fair actually that is a really good point man i actually was thinking about today how lucky lucky we are that um we like figured out that like just drinking uh beers and stuff like what it was it hops i guess or fermented fruit gets you drunk mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because like i bet you in like in a different universe i was watching a lot of rick and morty so this is why i started thinking about this but i was like in a different universe we just like figured out like certain snakes you like let, let them bite you and then you get like that same type of feeling and that's just like a, we just got snake bars everyone's just going in like yeah let me get a, a snake light and then he just fucking jacked you with a snake and yeah, everyone's just getting snake poisoned That'd all the time it would be a pretty interesting to go oh, like get a, a snake bar <laughs> i'm fucking in all right cool yeah. he's back off the wagon yeah bro. yeah just for just for one snake night only <laughs> Oh, dude. What would a snake bar be called? Snake bar. What do you mean? Yeah, just snake bar. <laughs> All right, a little on the yeah. nose, but I like yeah. it. Yeah. And the bar is lined with snakes. Yeah. Yeah, if you walk past that, you're not going to be like, what could that possibly be? The bouncer is <laughs> just an anaconda. Mm hmm. Yeah, or like a, a, a guy wrapped in an anaconda and you're like wearing a make. black shirt without sleeves. <laughs> 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 just, just like somewhere in the middle of this torso, there's just a black. 
Yeah. Sure. A lot of people's girlfriends are in there. (laughs) (laughs) There's water moccasins in the toilet. (laughs) Dude, steak part sounds sick. Yeah, I'm in. I would like I would like to invest. There's a lot there's a live band, it's just a bunch of rattlers. (laughs) Uh boys, I do have to go pretty soon though. I have another pod uh right after this, just a heads up. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, man. Well, um, yeah, man. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, just uh, my special on YouTube, Mike Cannon Comedy. That's the whole channel. I have well over two hours of stand up on that. I have sketches, TV appearances, podcast clips, anything you could possibly want to watch uh, if you have been entertained by me whatsoever. Uh, so that's Mike Cannon Comedy on YouTube, and then at I am Mike Cannon on social, and you'll you'll find my pods again if you're interested. All that stuff. But thanks for having me, dudes. I, yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for coming on. This was a Fair. blast, dude. Of course. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, and good luck with the group. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I got a trip tomorrow. It's going to be a rough one. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, fellas. <laughs> All right. Take right, man. it easy, man. All right. Have Peace. a good one. You too. All, All right. right. Keep so record- it's, ju- it's just us. Cause we, we didn't it's do the send off. I, I wanted to get him out of there. I don't want to waste yeah. time. Yeah. 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 He's got, what is he doing? He's doing some mic at eight or something. I don't even know what time it is. Uh, the, he says he has another pod. Yeah, I know. Is it, yeah. Is it, oh, yeah. He's got it. Yeah. He's potting it up, dude. Just back to back pods. That must be. Yeah, that I mean, I guess it's the equivalent of like hopping around doing spots at this point. Yeah, it must be, I guess that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's not you, a bad way to do your night. Yeah, but, why not? But yeah, dude, just have to say shout out to the real ones. We are best friends, bro. This has been a Drop Tent Media Production.